Another group trying to start a local news service in the town is finding money a stumbling block too. Andy Pearson, a former editor of the Llanelli Star, helped create a media cooperative with other journalists. They tried to get funding but came up against a brick wall. And we've still not got funding, but uh, we're not going to give up. Um, we went through um, all sorts of local government options, uh, Welsh Assembly government options, uh, charitable options, uh, but for some reason we didn't quite fit the criteria for whatever reason that is. The group has set up a website and now hopes to get so-called citizen journalists involved in writing about their own community. That we can teach people to write, we can teach people to take photographs, we can teach people to, to design web pages, whatever. Uh, and, and together, you, you know, I, I think um, uh, citizen journalists led, maybe guided by a few professionals, could be a real force for the community. People are already taking advantage of the fact that it's getting easier and easier to publish their stuff on the web. And what the grassroots are doing as well very well is creating their own websites, especially local organisations and communities. So if you look at someone like Port Albert Town FC or Aberavon, the rugby club, uh, they've got excellent websites, they've got information there. Uh, and, and it may be that what we can do as local newspaper is just bring all those things together and give them um, more publicity, more air and more chance to thrive. All sorts of initiatives are bubbling up from the grassroots, but that in itself could prove a problem. The Guardian was there to provide, you know, a one-stop shop for, for everything, and there's probably more information out there than ever before. You know, you look on the internet and there's a council website, there's a local health board website, there's a police website, but you, it could be a full-time job for you to go and look and, and check those websites every day and see what's changed, what's new, what's going on, what might affect you. This fragmentation is one of the problems that Rachel Howells is investigating in Port Talbot. She's trying to pin down the best way of providing local news in the digital age when traditional newspapers are facing stiff competition from the internet. The decline in readership means that there's a decline in advertising revenue and the decline in advertising revenue means that there is cost cutting and that means a loss of jobs which then means a loss of you know, quality perhaps in, in the product or a change certainly in the way that journalism is carried out. And it's a kind of vicious circle in a way because then the readership tends to fall off again. Rachel has already discovered one unforeseen result of The Guardian's closure. As part of the research I've got to go back through the archives and I've actually been really shocked to discover that since the uh, Patalbot Guardian stopped publishing, the, the archive of Patalbot has stopped. There's no papers being kept in the local library in Patalba anymore. So if you imagine, you know, there's people in there today looking back, say, 100 years to see what their family history is and doing research on the past of Patalba. But now that's not happening. If somebody in 100 years wanted to look back at what was happening now, there would just be this void. There's nothing. They're not even keeping the Patalba edition of the South Wales Evening Post. And I, I just think that's a crying shame. You know, the, it's not only that you've lost your voice for now and, and what happens to community now, but what happens, you're not even in the historical record for future generations, and there's something really wrong about that. The research was initiated by Martin Moore of the Media Standards Trust after he noticed a lack of in-depth news reporting in Port Talbot. Well, there, there, there are a couple of stories. I mean, one in particular struck me, which was that um, uh, they're building the, uh, the biggest biomass plant in the world in Port Talbot. Um, it's a plant that... Um, could have significant implications both in terms of energy use within the UK and in Europe um, but also in terms of our understanding of the pollution associated with biomass plants and, and, and lots of other questions. There's been virtually no reporting of it at all. At all. If you Google biomass plant Port Talbot um, you'll get you know, less than a dozen results over the course of you know, three, four years. So this is not just a problem that's peculiar to Port Talbot and Neath or even to Wales or the UK. It's a much, much broader problem um, about the sustainability of news and particularly local news. It's a tricky time of readjustment for news providers because their old business model simply isn't working anymore. We're trying to use the project as a way of, of, of working out, from it, finding our way through this very difficult period because it's, it's one thing that is clear is it's, there are no easy answers. You know, we, we've, we've moved away from um, the 20th century when uh, mainstream media was, was sort of a money-making machine, if you like, to an era where it's much, much more difficult for people to work out how to make money sustainably. It's all complicated by the fact that our idea of what constitutes news is changing. 
People are just as likely to be united by a community of interest these days rather than a geographical community, and that's all being made possible by the web. One of the big things that's happening at the moment is a change in how people consume news, where they get news from and what they consider news to be. Some academics are referring to this as kind of a me-sphere, the idea that it's not the journalist or the media product that's at the centre anymore, it's actually the person that we used to be called the audience. We're now more and more referring to them as community. Because the key thing is that these communities are able to find each other and that's not necessarily based on the traditional geographical locations that they're from. So it might be um, a shared problem, it might be um, an issue that they care passionately about, or just an interest. Younger people are already used to getting their news online, but moving everything onto the web means shutting out anyone with no access to the internet. In Neath Port Talbot, research has shown that could account for a quarter of the population. No, I haven't got anything like that. <laughs> I'm not bothered. <laughs> no, don't no, have that. No, I don't have No, no I can't use that. Sorry. Never use it. The internet, I don't use it that much. Okay. I prefer to read hard copy. So there's still an appetite for print, for the time being at least. Businessman Stephen Milburn has just proved that with the launch of his community news magazine for Cardiff Bay, The Penny Post. From the research that I did um, with regards to the readership, there is still a desire for something paper, something tangible, something that they can take home, something they can leave on a coffee table, something they can dip in and out of. It's interesting, I, not everything will be online on a laptop or a desktop PC, but bearing in mind tablet devices nowadays, there may come a point when everyone has a tablet device and that may sound the death knell for traditional print media. Plenty believe though that there's still a place for a printed weekly newspaper in Port Talbot and Neath. Where do people write to now? You know, if, if you want to be disgusted of Port Talbot, where do you write your letter to say, I'm disgusted of Port Talbot? And I still believe in print. I still think print has a future. And I'd love to see a weekly printed newspaper in Port Talbot. I, I don't think local papers have had that at all, but it, but it may well be that uh, there's another way as well that, 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 uh, that we can complement that in, in, in maybe not just Port Talbot, but towns all, all around Wales. The future may be unclear, but some feel there's room for optimism. We live in an amazing time when we can publish to the world um, for free. I hope that will mean actually when we get through this very difficult period there will be much greater levels of engagement because more people will be participating, more people will be creating their own um, photographs and, and blogs and um, whatever else it is such that actually at the, at the end of all this um, we'll be much the richer for it, I, I hope. Um, that's the optimist in me anyway.